Your man is trapped in the maze. Spiders, bats, and robots are tracking him down. The robots and creatures never stop. Shoot one, another appears. Fire off six shots, then pick up a reloaded weapon. The higher your score, the trickier the robots become. The only safe place is inside the bunker. And they're waiting just outside. Survival is the name of the game in Night Stalker. Now, while it does have a maze-like structure, what might not initially be apparent is this game doesn't play anything remotely close to Pac-Man, as many other games of this time would have you believe. Instead, this game actually has more in common with Berserk, and that's a good thing. So here's the deal. You have a guy. He's in this cave, and he's being hunted by robots, spiders, and bats. And he has to take them down before they take him down. Now the spiders and bats are minimal threats. They can only paralyze your character temporarily. The biggest problem are the robots. They fire bullets which can kill you. In order to defeat them, you must pick up a revolver located randomly on the map and fire upon them, hoping to destroy them. Each enemy is a little bit different though. The spiders are a constant threat, spawning on the top left corner of the screen in the spider's nest. That area will slow you down, so it's not advised to hang out there for too long. The spiders will paralyze you if they grab you, so watch out for that. The bats don't stick around as long as the spiders, though. Eventually, after you score 5,000 points, if you kill the bats, they will spawn more robots. Permanently. And then things really start ramping up. The basic robot, which spawns in the bottom left of the screen, will upgrade itself. It starts out as a dumb gray guy, which has very poor pathfinding skills, but eventually it will upgrade to blue, which has better pathfinding skills and will actively try and track you down. Then white, which is a lot faster and has a shield, which needs three bullets to be taken down. Then black, which has an even more powerful shot, which will actually absorb your fire, making attacking them head on impossible and then invisible. And these guys are almost impossible to find, which makes them very tricky to fight. You won't know they're there until they fire on you, which really makes things tough. The most impressive thing about Night Stalker is the atmosphere. Tension and vulnerability are the names of the game. Your character can't outrun normal bullet fire, which means outrunning opponent's fire is not an optimal strategy. I found it better to just hang out by a corner, pop out, try and shoot the enemy, and then pop back in. But once those bats die and two more robots spawn, that plan becomes less viable. Simply because you get surrounded and you can only have one bullet on screen at the time. The black robots fire a bullet which will actually absorb your shots, and after you fire six shots, you've run out of ammo. In fact, there's nothing more tense than realizing you just fired your last shot and you have two robots barreling down at you. At the center of the screen is a bunker which you are safe at. However, while the robots can't enter that, they will swarm around it, making escape almost impossible. And the two strongest versions of the robots, the cloaked ones and the black ones, they can actually destroy it permanently. So you're never really safe. It's very tense, very atmospheric, and that's great. And to knock this feeling straight out of the park, there's an ever-constant drowning sound effect of a heart beating in the background. This game gets incredibly tense when you're surrounded and you're out of ammo. You only have one shot, so you gotta make that count, trying to take out as many enemies at once. And once you're out of ammo, you have to run across the maze hoping to find another gun before you get gunned down yourself. That's what this game is. It's just brilliant amounts of tension and atmosphere. It might not look like much now, but even so, it is just crazy atmospheric. The biggest problem with Night Stalker, in fact it's really the only problem I have with it, is the same problem every other Intellivision game has. It's controls. It tries to set up a sort of dual stick shooter sort of mode. You use the keypad to fire off in one of the four cardinal directions, and then you use your circle pad control awful, awful thing to try and move your guy. But the problem is you need to essentially have two hands on your controller, and those things were not terribly big, nor were they terribly comfortable to hold on to. This problem is somewhat alleviated with the Intellivision Lives collection, which is what I'm playing it on for recording purposes, in that you use the face buttons to fire in the directions around you. And that's a little bit better. This is one of the 
earliest games I've ever seen that had a sort of dual stick control scheme. Didn't work terribly well, but it is still one of the easier controlling games on the Intellivision. Still not great, but still not bad. This game was also released on the Atari 2600 under the name Dark Cavern, was available on the Apple II, as well the Intellivision version is available on the Microsoft Game Room thing. If that's a thing anyone ever actually bothered using. I heard it had Jackal. Although I don't think it's the NES version, so I really don't care. And I gotta get a copy of Jackal. Where was I? Anyway, in the end, this is one of the more playable Intellivision games. It's by far one of the most atmospheric, and it is engrossing and a ton of fun even today. If you are still rocking the Intellivision or Intellivision 2, you have got to get Night Stalker. And maybe Dark Stalkers while you're at it. <laughs>